This is Top 30. Coming up, how you can get paid to travel the world and take selfies. We have great news for banana lovers, and we answer the question, are big dogs smarter than small dogs? Hi there, and welcome to the show. I'm Kristen Smith, and here are 30 things you need to know right now. Nearly half of all American adults have some form of heart or blood vessel disease, which is linked to one in three deaths. It kills more Americans than all forms of cancer and respiratory diseases, like pneumonia combined. Experts suggest you can reduce your risk of heart disease with regular exercise and following a plant-based diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Speaking of a plant-based diet, Beyonce is giving away a free lifetime ticket to her concerts with Jay-Z. But you have to go vegan. The singer promoted what is called the Green Print Project on her Instagram page, revealing she eats plant-based for breakfast and does meatless Mondays. The winner of the golden ticket, limited to 30 years and one show per tour, will be chosen at random on May 22nd. Well, say goodbye to the Boy Scouts. They are now accepting girls into their program, and they've officially changed their name to Scouts BSA. The move for inclusivity came as the organization felt all youth deserved a chance to scout and admitted in part to make participation easier for busy families whose kids all want to join. The move has been criticized by the Girl Scouts. And finally, it was so cold in the Midwest this week that Lake Michigan is freezing over and it's beautiful. Photos from residents of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan are taking the internet by storm with the rare sight of a great lake turned into a winter wonderland. In other news, Rosemary Bryant Mariner was a trailblazing fighter pilot who broke barriers in the U.S. Navy. The daughter of a Navy nurse and Air Force pilot, Rosemary was in the first inaugural class of women who earned their Navy wings in 1973. The following year, she became the first woman to fly a tactical fighter jet. In 1982, Rosemary was among the first women to serve aboard a U.S. Navy warship. And in 1991, she was the first woman to command an aviation squadron during the Gulf War. War. After her service, she was instrumental in the repeal of combat restrictions on women in the U.S. Armed Forces. And sadly, last week, Rosemary lost her five-year battle with ovarian cancer. She was 65. On Saturday, her memorial service will feature a ceremonial flyover with only female pilots. It will be a first in naval history. What a touching tribute to a truly groundbreaking woman. Now let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with Christina Partzinevelis. Christina, it sounds like Amazon is having a winning streak. Hi, Kristen. That's right. Amazon reporting another blowout quarter, a third straight record profit of over $3 billion in the holiday season. That's a 63% jump from last year. However, though, Amazon did say government restrictions overseas could slow down its global expansion, and there would likely be an uptick in spending this year. The stock is down about 5%. And you've got the Fiji water model that went viral photobombing celebrities at the Golden Globes, who is now suing the company she helped to promote. She claims that Fiji used a cardboard cutout of her without a permission after her newfound fame. Fiji says the lawsuit doesn't have any merit. And if you're one of those people who plans on calling in sick to work the day after the Super Bowl, fast food chain Jack in the Box has your hangover cure, and it's only six bucks. Well, over 17 million people are expected to miss work that day, so what did they get? Fans can get two signature Jack in the Box tacos, 10 chicken nuggets, one egg roll, curly seasoned fries, and of course, a small drink. I'm full just saying that. Good to know. Thanks, Christina. Time now for the New York Minute with Rosanna Scotto from Fox 5 New York. Rosanna, my friend, scaffolding is meant to protect New Yorkers from the constant construction, but what protects us from the scaffolding? True that, Kristen. Let me tell you, New York is under construction, and believe it or not, there are over 340 miles of scaffolding in New York City. In the last two years, though, there have been some seven reported incidents of pedestrians or property having been damaged by falling sidewalk sheds. Uh -huh. Now, Councilman Ben Kalos has authored a bill to tighten safety standards for scaffolding. So contractors would no longer be able to self-inspect scaffolding they put up. Instead, the power would be given to the Department of Buildings. And after initial check by inspectors, the scaffolding would be checked every six months with each inspection costing the building owner an incrementally growing fee. 
Now, the hope is that by finding the building owners for each visit, that'll give them a little incentive right. to get the repairs done instead of kind of dragging their feet and clogging the sidewalks, if you know what I mean. Well, money seems to be a pretty effective motivator, so we'll see what happens there. All right, I hear crime is about to spike in New York City. Crime does pay when it comes to, well, true crime, that is. Good news if you love, like, that show Serial and the Jinx, which I loved. So after launching in D.C. last year, the True Crime Festival, it's called Death Becomes Us, is coming to New York City for five days of morbid fun in March. So everybody can expect appearances by Damien Eccles, who spent two decades wrongfully on death row, Golden State Killer investigator Paul Holes, a look back at New York's 1976 Summer of Sam, okay. and screenings of forensic files with the hosts of the Wine and Crime podcast. Festival passes now on sale, and organizers are joking that whether you like true crime, serious, or campy, this will be a safe space for all fans to come together. I hope so, because let me tell you something. After that, I'm going home and locking my door in a New York minute. I know, right? I'm with you. Rosanna, it's been so much fun talking to you. Have a great day. You too, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to Danielle Knox now from Fox 35 Orlando. She has what you need to know today. So, Danielle, I hear people like to sleep in in the winter. Well, hello there, Kristen. If you found it impossible to pour yourself out of bed on a cold day like today, you are not alone, my friend. In fact, a UK heating company says you'll spend an extra 24 hours in bed during the winter. That's based on spending an extra 16 minutes a day in bed for 90 days, probably hitting that snooze button over and over again. The survey also found that the average person is late to work seven times during the winter, and one in five of us have taken a sick day at some point rather than having to go outside. Well, if you are focusing on your eating habits this year, be careful when the clock strikes 2.41 p.m. A new study conducted by One Poll says when the clock hits that magic mark, your willpower, like Cinderella's glass slippers, will disappear. That's because 2.41 falls right in the middle of the lull between lunch and dinner. The study says Americans think about food 40 minutes a day, which adds up to 10 full days a year. So what do we crave the most? Chocolate cheese, strawberries, and of course, bacon. <laughs> And listen to this. According to the New York Post, a new survey found that grabbing a drink with your boss outside of work strengthens relationships in the office. In fact, at least 49% of the 1,000 people surveyed say that having a drink eventually led to better connections and job opportunities. People who took this survey also said they mostly stuck to wine and beer over the hard stuff, for obvious reasons, of course. And that's what you need to know. And Kristen, I don't drink, but I know that the truth really comes out when you've had a few. So keep it to just one if you're going to have a drink with your boss after work. <laughs> Back to you. Very good advice. Thanks, Danielle. If you and your special someone love traveling and taking pictures, this could be the job of your dreams. The jewelry store Robbins Brothers will pay one couple to travel the U.S. looking for the perfect spot to propose. The couple's official titles will be proposal ambassadors. Over six months, they'll travel to six different destinations. Their job will be to find and document the most romantic spots in each place to help others who plan to pop the question. The ambassadors will pick which 48 hours to travel so that they can also keep their regular jobs. But while on the clock for Robbins Brothers, the pair will be reimbursed for all of their flights, hotels, meals, and other outings. They also receive an hourly fee to plan the trip and create content about their visit. That's why one of the job requirements is an active presence on social media. Interested couples can apply online. They just have to be submitted by the deadline on Valentine's Day. All right, moving on. Last July, Sherelle Powell sat helpless at the hospital bedside of her brain-dead brother. Only after deciding to pull the plug, though, did Powell learn a shocking truth. It wasn't her brother at all. With more, we're joined by Law & Crime Network host Jesse Weber. So, Jesse, this is a crazy story. How did this even happen? Wait till you hear about this story. So there's a man named Freddie Clarence Williams, 40 years old, who's admitted to St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx for an alleged drug overdose. The hospital mistakenly called Powell, thinking that was his sister, and emergency contact because she has a brother named Frederick Williams, who's also 40 years old. So she rushes to the hospital, even though he had tubes and there was swelling, 
said this man really looked like her brother. And then the hospital allegedly tells her how dire the situation is. He's brain dead, the chances aren't looking good, she's devastated, the family's informed, and then she makes the decision to remove life support and he dies. Now here's the kicker. Her actual brother was in Rikers Island in jail and no one knew, no one knew where he was. It was only after the medical examiner reviewed the body that they realized this person wasn't Powell's brother. I have so many questions, this is insane. So Jesse, Powell has now filed suit against the hospital. So where does this case go from here? Right, she is saying that as a result of the hospital's negligence, and she's suing them for unspecified damages, she suffered severe emotional distress. Now we see this as two areas, one, the absolute mental anguish of making her believe that this was her actual brother, but also the guilt at ending the life of a man she never knew. Now the hospital spokesperson said that this lawsuit has no merit. Powell and her attorney have tried to get more information about this deceased man, but they've been denied, citing privacy concerns. And then in one of the most bizarre aspects of this entire case, Powell actually contacted her real brother and told him the situation. Now at first, he was a bit alarmed by the idea that his sister would pull the plug on him, but he understood the circumstances. And he said at the end of the day, how is it possible that a hospital can do this? And look what they put my family through. It makes no sense. Wow, just a devastating case. Jesse, thank you so much for breaking it down. And for more on this case and others 24-7, you know where to go. Head to lawandcrime.com. We'll have more coming up after this. Welcome back. For any busy mom on the go, one of the hardest things to do is to keep up in the wardrobe department. <laughs> so here with some fashion trends to look out for is fashion expert, Book Jaffe. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Kristen. All right, so what do you have today? All right, so I want to talk about three trends that are inspired by athletic influences. And when you hear about them, you may say, wait a second, how am I going to wear this trend? Okay. But I think it's important to get these on the radar screen. I love it. Where should we start? Okay. So we're going to start at one, and, and this one is going to take a second to digest. <laughs> it's the biker short trend. So okay. when I say biker short, I really am actually talking about <clears throat> what we've typically worn to spin class. But women are wearing this like a new Bermuda short. Think of it like a mini skirt okay. in that it's tight to the body. I know you're still thinking. I don't get, the, I don't this, get this trend. I don't get this trend. It's really out there. It's a new comfortable way to okay. be body con on the bottom. And the key to wearing this trend is you do something more covered and more voluminous on top to sort of counteract what's happening on the bottom if you want to try the trend. Okay, but in 20 years, I think we're going to laugh at this. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's possible, but this is something that people should just know is okay. happening in the fashion world. Got it. Another trend that's happening is this sneaker. We've seen fashion sneakers. It's been going on for now years. Yeah. But the it's becoming a more exaggerated version of itself. So think of dad sneakers, think of clunkier soles with more functional bottoms, even things like hiking inspirations and uh -huh. the laces. Your sneaker is meant to be noticed, and it's a great way when you pair it back to those crop jeans this season to be comfortable and in style. And then maybe I'll even go hiking. Maybe I'll even <laughs> go hiking. Then the last trend is that typically the neon color palette has been reserved for things like workout wear and swim gear. Yeah. But as we look forward in fashion, it's really infusing itself into other categories because you can do little things like update a white t-shirt for the season in an acid green color and wear it underneath everything from a jean jacket to a plaid blazer. And that really Ooh. takes you forward into the spring season. So the neon trend is definitely something I could get behind. As long as you don't pair it with those biker shorts. <laughs> That's a no-no. All right, stick to the rules that Brooke outlined. Thank you for coming in, Brooke. Thank you. All right, Carrie Lake from Fox 10 Phoenix brings you this week's life hacks. So Carrie, my friend, what do you have for us? Hi, Kristen. I have a great way to cut up an avocado and you won't hurt yourself. First, you obviously cut the avocado in half. And then if you want to dice it, you take a butter knife. You don't need a sharp knife and a sharp knife can hurt you. So just a little butter knife and you cut it like that into cubes. And then you take a spoon and you scoop it out and you've got diced avocado. This life hack is great because it saves you time later. So you're cutting up some herbs, let's say it's basil, for something you're cooking in the kitchen. Cut up a little bit extra, maybe a tablespoon per square, 
Put it in the ice cube tray, cover it with water, and freeze it. The next time you're making a sauce or something that requires that herb, you just pop out one of the herb ice cubes. And finally, you're going to heat up a couple of bowls of food in the microwave. Instead of doing it one at a time to make sure it's evenly heated, you can do both of them together, but there's a trick. You have to put one on top of a mug like that, and then the heating will be even. A couple minutes in there, and you'll have two piping hot bowls of soup. Back to you, Kristen. I love that. What a great trick. Thanks, Carrie. All right, listen to this next story. A virus threatening to wipe out banana plantations all over the world has been eradicated. We were this close to never having one of America's favorite fruits again. But thanks to genome editing, scientists were able to target and destroy the viral DNA inside the ganja manjaya variety of bananas grown in Africa. Now farmers are hoping to use these healthy edited bananas to grow virus-free crops. There are said to be more than 150 different varieties of bananas, but but the Cavendish is by far the most popular commercially. The Cavendish variety was not affected by the virus, but they have been plagued by a devastating fungus. Scientists are hoping to use their genome editing method to eventually make Cavendish bananas resistant to the disease, so we'll never be in jeopardy of losing bananas again. Thank goodness. And Top 30, we'll be right back. Welcome back. The biggest game day of the year is coming up this weekend, so it's time to prepare some grub for all your hungry guests. And to help us out, we've got celebrity chef and Food Network co-host, Sunny Anderson. Sunny, it's so good to see you. Well, I watch you all the time, so it's an honor to be here, especially on such a big, big game week. So we all want to hear about your new way to buffet. Yes, so I invented an inflatable snack stadium. It's called the Inflatium. Uh, is taking over football season. Everyone's buying one. It's a great centerpiece for your party that you can fill with all your snacks and your food. And you get it at Party City, and it's just $19.99. So uh, I've seen a lot of people picking it up for the big game so they can fill it up and relax for the big game. But the key is the food that goes inside. What should we feed our guests? You gotta have the beginning, middle, and the end. The beginning are the snacks, the middle is like maybe the chili and something like that, or pizza, and the end is hopefully coffee and sweets. And all the recipes are for game day, under five ingredients. So here I have two dips. This is an awesome dip of just sour cream and brown sugar, which is amazing for fruit, which, you know, some people are still on that game plan. It's almost uh, you know, the beginning of the year still. And this, an awesome, awesome dip for vegetables. All you have to do is get some whipped cream cheese and store-bought basil pesto. Stir that together and you're gonna look like a star. I think a lot of times people go to the grocery store and they're just looking for chips and dips and you don't realize you've got great ideas in your pantry already. You're speaking my language. Just a couple ingredients perfect for all the Hungry Rams fans that I'll be with. Sunny, thank you so much. Well, just when you thought robots could do it all, they start to do more. In fact, it's been more than a decade that iRobot, the maker of the inside vacuum and pool cleaner, has been working on robotic lawn mowers. The quiet mower Roomba works slowly around your lawn. It can mow daily compared to your typical weekly or bi-weekly routine. Then it returns to its charging station when it's done. Roomba owners can schedule mows right from their phone. If it runs low on battery charge in the middle of a mow, it heads right back to its charging station for juice and then picks up where it left off. Roomba also comes with radio technology that can sense different obstacles around the yard, like cans or debris. But don't break out your wallets just yet. It won't go on sale in the U.S. until 2020. In further robot news, according to the science website Gizmodo, researchers at MIT developed a robot that can actually play Jenga with you. It can play the same way you can, but it relies on both visual and physical responses from human players. The robot fingers can actually Actually pick up on movements and friction of the blocks it touches. It also uses its camera to see the tower shape and position to help in the game. With your robots able to do the chores and play games with you, they're becoming just like another member of the family. Stay with us, we have more Top 30 coming right up. Welcome back. This next one might upset some people. Are big dogs smarter than small dogs? A new study from the University of Arizona says yes. Their research shows that larger breeds have better short-term memory and self-control than smaller breeds, regardless of the training they receive. They measured short-term memory by hiding treats under plastic cups while the dogs watched. The smaller dogs had more difficulty remembering where the treats were hidden. 
self-control was tested by placing treats in front of the dogs and forbidding them from taking them. The larger dogs waited longer before making a move. But hey, there is some good news for all you small dog lovers out there. Brain size does not seem to be associated with all types of intelligence. They found that smaller dogs can sometimes perform better on social tests. So they may not be as bright, but they are just as lovable. Well, my friends, today is our last episode of Top 30. We've been with each other for almost 400 episodes over the last two years, and we've enjoyed every single minute. We hope you have too. Staying on top of the news has never been more important, and we appreciate you welcoming us into your homes and really trusting us to give you the day's biggest stories. So that's our show, and thank you so much for watching.